Trinity exposed number 10. Trinitarians are antichrists that deny the Father and the Son. 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse 18. Little children, it is, the, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. I've seen that thing for years with this ministry. Uh, most of the enemies that I have were people that used to follow this ministry. They used to call me a great preacher and everything else. But you see, the Lord starts to reveal things to me and to other members of the body of Christ. Most of the videos I've ever put online are other people's ideas. They say, Brother Brian, could you do a study on this? Could, you know, I've, I've even gotten study notes from people in the mail, and I'll preach that. So yeah, this is really good. I'll check it with the scriptures to make sure it lines up. And I say, wow, that's really phenomenal. You know, it isn't just me. The body of Christ is being shown more and more and more things. Why? As we get closer to the catching away, the Lord is making a distinction He's separating the sheep from the goats, you see. Not like it's going to be at the judgment of the nations in Matthew chapter 25. I get it. But the whole point is the real converts are going one way and the false ones are getting ready to stay right here and find themselves left behind when the rapture hits. Or the catching away, if you want to say it that way. But let's continue. Verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Unless ye believe in the Trinity, then ye have the Holy Three. 1 John 2, 21, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Right there. Trinity people. They deny the Father and the Son being one and the same. Oh no, they're, they're, they're separate. They're separate, but they're equal. They're one, but they're not. Crazy. They're denying the Father and the Son. Jesus isn't God the Father, you see. They don't believe that. Verse 23, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. I acknowledge the Son because I understand who He is. He's fully, completely God. He's not a third of God. Or like I always say, or another God that's one of three gods or something. Verse 24, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall continue in the Son and in the Father. I can continue in the Son and in the Father because I put my faith in Jesus Christ that He is God, completely God. Verse 25, And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Trinity people, these people, the hirelings and things that try to support the Catholic Trinity, they're seducing people. I mean, think about it. I stand for the Trinity. Where is that in the King James Bible? Well, you know, the word, it just, it means Godhead. It's, you know, I'm not going to use Godhead. I'm just going to keep saying Trinity, even though it has no basis in Scripture. You see that? I mean... Let's just say I'm just going to come out and say, you know what? I'm saved by the name of Joshua. Well, it's, it means the same thing basically as Jesus. It's the same kind of root word and whatever else there and whatever, you know. I mean, I'm just going to say Joshua. You know, we have heard the joyful sound. Joshua saves. Joshua saves. Let's just go around saying, you know, I believe in the Lord Joshua Christ. You say, well, you can't do that. That's changing the name. But it's okay to change the name of Godhead to Trinity. When the word Trinity was made up nearly 100 years after the completion of Scripture, and that's okay, you got a real problem there. But look at verse 27, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of Him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in Him. What's the context? It's talking about both the Son and the Father. And yet it says, Him. Singular. Wait a second. How can you have two, the Son, the Father, and yet you abide in Him? Um, well, if in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You see how it works? 
one body, the flesh, the soul, the spirit. Three in one. It's simple if you're saved and you understand the Bible. And you don't need me to teach this stuff to you. I've talked to Christians. I've been talking to a lot of Christians about this whole issue. And they say, yeah, it's weird. I've always believed that Jesus is God the Father. It just makes sense. I mean, how could he not be completely holy God? If he's God manifest in the flesh, well, then how could he be just a third of God? Or This whole Trinity thing is confusing. Exactly. God is not the author of confusion. So God is not the author of the Trinity teaching. 